Within 10 minutes, I will show you how to create this world with only one asset that is completely free and beginner friendly. So inside Unreal, I want to select games, then the third person template and then name the project whatever you want. Once you are in the project, you can hold your left mouse button and then move around with VASD, W-A-S-D, just like any game. And then if you hold your left mouse, you can also look around and this is the movement in Unreal Engine. In front of you, you have a bunch of stuff that we can select and most people would say delete everything, but we're just gonna head into the building immediately. So we move everything to the right. This will be our building area, okay? So go up here, find a little plus icon, find Quixel Bridge which is a beautiful, beautiful team doing assets for us. Now go to collections and go to environment and find natural. Inside natural, there's a bunch of different themes with beautiful assets that you can explore later. But for this tutorial, we're gonna use the limestone quarry, okay? So press yourself in here. And there is a lot of stuff here, but we're only gonna use one asset to build our whole scene. That asset is called quarry cliff. I wanted to find this one, okay? And then you choose quality down here. Nanite is the highest, but I wanted to choose high quality for now, okay? And then you press the download button. Once it's done, you press the add button okay and that will pop up this window you can close that down minimize this one and go back to your scene now go to content browser and then find the mega scans folder that's where all of your assets has been downloaded okay so there's two folders in there there's a bunch of stuff in that mega scan folder but you only want to care about the static mesh which is highlighted in teal okay drag that out to your scene and once you drop it you will get a gizmo the gizmo has three different colors you have green red and blue that's the arrows if you hold the blue one you will drag the mesh up and down and the red one is back and forth and the green one is left and right okay and if you hold in the middle the little white thing you can move it freely in any direction you want if you press ctrl z on your keyboard it will snap back to where you started and now with the mesh selected i want you to press e on your keyboard so this is the rotating tool and it works in a similar way you can rotate it this way using the red one the blue one this way and the green one this way Press Ctrl Z on your keyboard enough times to bring it back to where we started and then rotate it 90 degrees flat like this, okay? With the mesh still selected, I want you to press W on your keyboard to bring back the moving uh, tool. And here you hold in Alt and drag it to one direction and that will create a duplicate version of it. Now take the duplicate and press E to get the rotating tool back and rotate it so they face each other, then press W again to bring the moving tool back, and then snap them together so that they are sort of aligned, like this. Once that is done, we want our player to be here. So let's move back to our starting template with all the boxes and stuff. You don't have to care about anything except this little gamepad icon. Select it, and if you can't see it, press G on your keyboard that hides and unhides it. Once you have selected it, I want you to drag it all the way to your scene or just above the scene. This is not the most effective way to do this, but that doesn't matter. And now once you have it above your scene, you can press the play button up here, the green button. But our player just falls straight through the rock because this mesh does not have any collision on it. The next step will be a bit daunting. There's a lot of information here, but press the details panel. Okay, go to the static mesh, this little icon here, double click it and this will open up a new window. There's a lot of stuff here, but just scroll down to collisions and find collision complexity. In the drop-down menu, use complex collision as simple, okay? I know there's a lot of information, but don't worry. Just click that, go up here to the collision button, find the auto convex collision in the bottom, click that one, and that will open a little new window down here just press apply and you will have a cool sci-fi effect going on and then go up and save by pressing the little button up here in the left. I know that's a lot of information, but just follow these steps and then close down the window. And now if you press the play button, the character can move on your rocks because now you have collision on these meshes. Now we get to the creative part. So I want you to move your player spawner up, move it up like this. Then select both meshes by holding control on your keyboard and selecting both. Then press R on your keyboard, which is a scaling tool. Now you can scale it in different ways. I don't want you to stretch it like this, 
but if you press in the middle and you move your mouse, you can uniform scale it. So both become bigger in a nice uh, uniform way, like this. Now, if you press play, you can see that we have a larger area for the player to move on. And we've started our creative process of building this level with one mesh. Now with the asset selected, press W on your keyboard to bring back the move tool and then hold in Alt and duplicate, just like we did before. So we're creating the ground where the player will move around. As we're only using one asset, the pattern may look a bit repetitive, so move them around to your liking and keep pressing play to see it from your player perspective, because that's what really matters in the end. Once you're happy, we're gonna start building some walls. So select one of your meshes, click W for the move tool, then hold in Alt to duplicate it, rotate it up, so like this, so you create a wall, and duplicate that one as well, so they're standing next to each other, you've started then your first wall formation, you could say. Duplicate that one, rotate it so they face each other, and do the same thing here with the duplicate next to each other. Now, we've started to create our first walled path. Go into the player perspective, and you can see it starts looking pretty good. Okay, so with your ground selected, by holding in control and selecting all of them, you can duplicate all of them at the same time by holding in Alt and moving them. Now, you see that the textures are starting to get quite repetitive, so you can, for example, rotate one of these to break up the pattern. It will look better from the player perspective, and you can do this how much we want. I'm not gonna go into deep detail of doing this in this tutorial, I just want to show you how to be creative. So. Here you can just keep duplicating the walls. You can always look from your player perspective that it looks okay. With four pieces selected of your ground, you can keep duplicating them and then rotate them all slightly to start curving your path. Then duplicating all of them and rotating them and keep doing this to start creating the path. It will look a bit weird in the beginning, but just trust the process. And then duplicate your walls and rotate the walls so it fits your curve. And you get creative freedom here, however you want to do it. It's up to you. Um, but you have started to get your first tools to see how you can create this world. Now, to create the overhang that you saw in the beginning, you can rotate it and scale it and then uh, find a way to make it fit your level so that it creates this overhanging arch, you could say, uh, of stone. So this is one way to do it, for example. So it's just rotating, scaling it, and putting it in position. And now we have our overhanging arc. Let's start adding some lights. So go up here to the plus button, find lights, point light. Go to the details panel, crank the intensity to max, the radius to max, and then the light color, you can choose whatever color you want in the color picker. I'll choose this jello candlefish. After that, if you want to create this sort of cavey feeling, you can duplicate your overhang and then rotate it just like we've done uh, during this whole tutorial and create this sort of cave system. Uh, you do not have to care about that it looks like shite from other angles. That's because the meshes don't have a double side geometry and that's to say performance. You just keep building from your player perspective. That's what matters. It doesn't matter how it looks from other angles. And um, now I'm just speeding this up and all I'm using is the techniques that you have been taught. So I am duplicating, I am rotating, I am moving. You can also duplicate the lights to keep creating a path for the player to explore. And the point here is to have fun, you know, just use these methods by scaling, duplicating and moving this asset around to create a whole environment. And after a while you might see some stuff, you know, here I would like to have some grass, some small rocks. You can always go back to the Quixel bridge where we got this asset from the beginning and then download more assets to start populating your scene. But this is to get your creativity going. It's called like an early blockout uh, using an asset. One more thing, if you press Ctrl L on your keyboard and keep Ctrl pressed in and move the mouse around, you can move the sun around. And this will greatly impact on how your level looks as the light keeps moving. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you're having fun creating this little level. And if you have any questions, just comment. I will reply to you and there will be some more advanced tutorials coming up and I hope to see you there.